on Giorno from our home in Sicily. You know, we did a video a few days ago about some of the important things that you need to know about moving here to Sicily or staying for an extended period of time. And thank you for all the responses and you had lots of questions and we will answer some of those questions later on. But in this video, we wanna address some fundamental things that you should probably know, not only if you're coming to live for an extended time or moving here, but as an everyday traveler. And I think the first thing would be the commune. So what is the commune? The commune is sort of like the town hall. It is the town hall. The town hall. Give us more specifics about what the commune does in every, and by the way, each town and city has a commune. You see, here's the bizarre thing, okay? <clears throat> Sicily is a province of Italy, as we all know, okay? Sicily has, what, 240 towns and villages, mm -hmm. cities, towns, and villages. You know that, too. There are, that means there are 250 mayors, sindaco. There are 250, <laughs> there are 250 town councils, right? There are so many people that wear sashes here that are official people, Right. Bearing in mind that the population of Sicily is not even 5 million people, right? You've got all these, what do they call, all these chiefs and not too many Indians. <laughs> all right? Now, all everyone, right, so wait, let me just, let me, a town hall. And there are good town halls that have good people that are dedicated to loyal and professional. And then they have others where the civil servants there are milkmen or milkwomen, and they milk the process. Isn't they game the, the system. Case everywhere. Oh my God! Try to get, try to get an official document out of either of the two big cities, Palermo or Catania, and it's literally like pulling teeth. You can't do it. Others, smaller ones, are very receptive. All right. Besides getting all those papers that you may need, the community really is the brains, the nerve center of a town where a lot of other departments are also located. So a lot of times if you want something done, you would have to go to the Comune's website and all of them have a great website and there are different numbers for the different departments. You know, the, uh, let me tell you something. You need to understand how your town hall works. From environmental police, say for example, your neighbor next door is and putting garbage on your property or not picking it up as that garbage. They have environmental police, which, by the way, will find the people. They have other things, too. Many water department, if your water doesn't work, you get to call them. The road department, uh, you know, there's a bazillion things, like a typical town hall. The nerve center of yeah. the town. The key idea is to be nice and respectful, though, as a strineri, because that's what you are, a stranger to them. They don't know you when you go and contact these officials. That's what I wanted to say about the community. Okay, let's move on to a very important uh, word that we've used a lot, and some of you have heard about it, Codici Fiscale. The Codici Fiscale is a number that you can either get here or back in the United States, and it's so much like a, can I say a social security number? It's really, it's a tax number. A it's tax, a tax number. number. Okay, you can get it, look at if you're gonna, coming here to rent an apartment, you need to have your cottage of fiscali, for sure. If you get to buy something here, say for example you want to buy a house, you have to get your cottage of fiscali here. If you go get your health card, you need to have your cottage of fiscali. Your cottage of fiscali, the fiscal code is akin, as she said, to a social security number, but it's not a social security number per se. It's a tax code. Because they got to put you in the system to see if you've paid any taxes for the services that you're you're asking for. Okay, not that you need to have uh, money in the in the system, but they want to make sure that it's according to Hoyle, and you are who you're saying you're going to be. Now so let me ask you get something. Get that in the state. You get it from your local uh, uh, consulate if you before you come here. It takes about three four weeks to get, and then that's your number forever. So what about if you're just coming here and visiting, let's say, for a month, and you come every year or maybe every other year? Do you really need a code? No. Unless, no. if you're just coming here on a, a tourist visa, that which is 90 days, by the way, you don't need it. But if you intend to buy something, an automobile, 
a car, engage in a lease, something of a legally enforceable nature, you need to have your cottage of fiscali, for sure. Okay, let's go to another... Bank word. account, too, by the way. Well, okay, well, let's talk about banks. Opening up a bank. If you're going to be coming here, opening up a bank, it's not always an easy thing, but it's good to have. It's damn near impossible if you're coming here to get a resident card uh, and to have a bank account. You really have to get that bank account before you do anything, which means you have to have your cottage of fiscali. Now, most banks won't even look at you unless you have a resident card. So in many cases, it's a, a catch-22. Okay. Which is exactly what happened to me. Which is what happened to Esther. Which However, I didn't have my resident card. I was trying to open up a bank account, but to have a health card, I had to have a bank account and blah, 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 blah. So it was, it was one of those things that you had to have all of things in line. But some banks, I showed them exactly how much amount I was going to transfer to my Italian bank because they have a minimum. And they wouldn't even look at me until I had a resident card. Well, listen, here's how you do it, okay? Seriously. When you come here, I'm sure you're going to know people. Or if you don't know people, get to know people. But at some point, some point, the person that's going to help you the best is somebody who knows a bank officer. Now, in Esther's case, she happened to know me and Massimo. Massimo went with her because I have various accounts. My business had various accounts at one of the biggest banks. What's it called? Unicredit? Unicredit. Unicredit, which is which kind is of like the Bank of bank. America. It's a great yeah, bank. Yeah, it's a great bank. It's kind of like the Bank of America, so to speak, of uh, Italy. And she had no problem uh, opening it up. I had to go three times. We sat there for two hours, and I had to show a lot of evidence about a lot of stuff, sign my name a lot of times, multiple times. I'll, I'll give them this much. When it comes to security, they're high, high, high on top of it for sure. But it was a process. Listen, two hours, three times, that's about par for the course. You'll, you'll have to make multiple trips to open up a bank account. And here's why, okay? Let's say, for example, you pick the unit credit in Palermo on Corso Umberto, or you pick one in Catania on another street. That's your bank. That's where you do your banking. It's not like the United States where you can go to all the different branches because it's not as well connected that way, okay? So they open up what they call a dossier on you, and your dossier is at the bank that you open it up. Now, having said that, yeah. there are ATM machines that yes, you that's can use different. all over the that's place. Different. But to do some actual banking, you have to go into the bank that you opened your account in. Now, let's stick, let's stick with this issue for a second because fundamental is still here in Sicily. Although, over the years, they've improved greatly is cash. Cash is still king, although many places do accept credit cards. Now, having said that... Don't be surprised if there are places where the internet's not working, the credit card machine isn't working because they have one of those portable ones that rely on internet, yep. or maybe there's a power outage, or who knows what. But that's something that's fundamental to keep in mind, that although places do accept credit cards, cash is still king. Now, let me Here's tell you one, one, let me just tell you one okay. more thing about this. You want to make sure that while you're here, even if you're visiting or just coming for a longer term, that you are not without cash because it has happened to us multiple times where we'll go to a cash machine and it's out of cash. It does happen. Especially on Sundays. Especially. There's no especially. Yeah, on the weekends especially. There's no especially. Or holidays. It happens. Yeah. They are out of cash. So we always say... Keep a few hundred euros with you, whether you're traveling, you're moving, you're living, you're whatever you're thinking, because that does happen. Now, listen, I want to say something before we move on about uh, the banking, that both of us have also bank accounts in the United States and also here. So it's not like you have to give up your account over there. It's just good to have an account, and you'll need it if you're getting a residency or you're trying to buy something or so forth. I have uh, two things now to say uh, to remind things. me uh, about the banking. Number one, 
Try to stay away from the so-called money changers at the airports. They charge you exorbitant fees when you de depart. And then if you have extra euro left over, they screw you, so to speak, on giving you a proper exchange rate. So be very careful about those so-called uh, money changes. I said that earlier, yeah. Now, here's the other thing. For those who are retiring or uh, want to come here and they have money in an American bank, a lot of money in an American bank, what you want to do is get a second card from that bank but link them together, okay? So say, for example, your Social Security check or your annuity check comes into the first account, your major account, all right? The bank, you can make arrangements with the bank to have it linked to a second account and you'll get a second debit card. Now, with that second debit card, you can put a limit on it. So, say, for example, you only want to take out a thousand dollars a euro at a time, which, by the way, is the limit in America. Don't go five thousand, it's not going to work. Do a thousand or fifteen hundred uh, euro. And then with that second card, that's the one you use. Say, for example, you have to pay your rent, you could take your cash out of your American account and deposit it into your Italian account. That's one way of doing it. Or you could have the money wire transferred from your major account, right as Esther does, mm -hmm. to her uh, to her uh, bank account. That's, that's a very good way to do it. But for me, that's what I do. And finally, I treat credit cards like, like a bank. So I, yeah. I live off my credit cards. I have three Capital <clears throat> One accounts. We, well, and yeah. We, yeah, what I do is I use the points to get accumulated, you get the best, the best currency conversion rate from credit cards if they're a good, reputable card. So yeah, I'm not, you got to do your research. Yeah, All right, let's move on. Go ahead, okay. move on. One of the things a lot of you have been asking us about is health insurance, health cards, hospitals, and so forth. So let me just start out by saying that Italy has one of the best health um, care systems I would say in Europe, one of the top in Europe, and both Alfred and I have experienced it by using several doctors and several emergencies and so forth. So let me just put a lot of you to rest that that is something very good and important. Now the healthcare system here is free for everyone if you're an Italian citizen, if you're a resident. But if you are not, there are a couple things that you can do. For instance, I'm uh, a resident of Italy, but I have a dual passport, a Hungarian and an American. And so every year I have to buy, I have to pay for my insurance, <clears throat> which is a very small amount, but I still have to pay for an insurance. Now, if you don't want to be part of that um, free national system, you can get a private insurance. Correct. Many insurances available at different costs and different coverages. Now, let's talk about that, and then I want to talk about pharmacies. All right. Uh, on the private insurances, the, the general tariff is someplace between two and 3,000 euro a year. Last year it was 2,000, but they go up all the Every time. Every year. Per year. It's not a lot. And now, covers with, everything. Now, some of the American insurance policies that you can get, travel insurance, for example, you have to, you know, make sure that you don't have to pay the money out of your U.S. funds if you're hospitalized, and then you'll be reimbursed by the hospital. So when you, before you buy anything, make, ask that question. But emergency care is covered regardless of whether you are a citizen, not citizen, or a tourist. You'll and I had that happen to me firsthand. You always where get Where I had an incident, right. I was taken to the hospital. That was before I had uh, my health card here in Sicily, and my care was great. Let yeah. me tell you, it was a hospital outside of Catania, and uh, they were very helpful. It was very clean, and the doctors were great. So now, rest know. assured. There are many others here around Sicily. Let me tell you about a home doctor, okay? Because one of the first things before you get your national uh, health card, you have to select a doctor from the area, okay? They'll give you, a, they'll provide you a list of what doctors are in your area, and typically, uh, one doctor handles roughly three thousand uh, residents of the area. You have to uh, 
There's no appointment necessary. You just kind of walk in. But what the doctor... Although does, appointments are recommended. Okay, but sometimes, most of the I've never had an appointment in 22 years. When there's something wrong, we just walk in and I wait and I go and see the doctor. But here's the thing, is they'll give you for, you know, regular stuff, a cold, a cough, you know, you stub your toe, stuff like that. They'll help you out. But if it's something like a heart or a knee or something like that, they will refer you to a doctor in the area. Now, you don't have to use that, okay? You could go to whomever you want. And then finally, there's a second level of healthcare here called private clinics. Private clinics are specialized clinics, heart clinics, orthopedic clinics, diabetic clinics. And those you have to pay for. Well, you, you, first of all, the regulate health insurance kicks in, the national insurance, but if there's any overages, you'll have to pay. For example, I had four big, when I had my, my heart uh, examination, they did my blood work, they did three different echograms and EKGs and all this stuff. The insurance covers everything. I had to pay 150 euro, which is basically peanuts, huh? I mean, it's like well, nothing. when I had my uh, had to get my physical therapy after I broke my leg, yeah. I had to, that was not covered, and I had to pay for each one of the visits. How much were they? So, not a lot. I, I can't remember. It was several bucks? years ago. No, it was several years ago. The point of the matter is that there are those specialized clinics that you will have to. For instance, didn't you just pay 150 euro? We were. Uh, going to get an opinion about your knee and yeah. you just went to for a visit we stayed 15 minutes the guy said go get an x-ray here's your uh, prescription go get an x-ray the cost is 150 euro and Trust yet, me, he wasn't happy about that <laughs> and I didn't go back to the guy and I'm not going to but but here's the thing too okay another benefit of having the health insurance card from the national uh, government is that when you go and get your prescriptions, you get a slight discount, not a huge yes. discount, a slight discount. Long and the short of it is, is the medical cost here, I bet they're not 15%, maybe 15% of what you would pay in the United States. Mm -hmm. Cheap. All yes. right? And Cheap. very good. I have to tell and you that good too. my dentist is one of the best dentists I've ever had in my life. Hands down. Mine too. Good. Well, we Happens have the same, the same one. one. <laughs> <laughs> but she's All great. right, so I just want to make sure that you guys know that health uh, providers, health care, and so forth is very good here. Now, in that same genre, I want to talk about pharmacies because pharmacies all over uh, the island are a great place to go for anything. You have a cold, you have, you know, something, you have an infection or something. They are very professional. They're also, they have to go to school, so they're, they're doctor, doctoressa. We have a doctoressa over there in our pharmacy. Yep. Any problem I have, she'll take a quick exam, and they're very good at recommending. Now, one of the big things that was a huge surprise for me is that you can get, let's say, antibiotics over the counter. With no prescription. With no prescription. Now, there are pharmacies that won't give it, and, and some of them are have different reasons for not allowing you to uh, get them, especially in some of the um, touristy areas. But the good thing about um, the pharmacies, they have products that we get into the, in the United States at a higher percentage. For example, Alfred in his Wolterim, Right, your cream, it's a 2%, whereas in the United States you can only get 1%. Without a prescription. So, without a, without, yeah, a, prescription. without a prescription. So pharmacies are a great tool, whether you're traveling here, whether you're visiting, whether you're moving here, be assured that it, uh, pharmacies are very good. Now, something very important along that uh, to keep in mind is that the pharmacies are not like the ones in the United States. For example, CVS is open 24 hours. No, they are open from... 8 to 1 or 9 to 1, then 4 or 4.30 to 8. They're very specific. And don't expect pharmacies, by the way, to be open on Sundays. You know what I like about the pharmacy situation here in, in Sicily, at least, is that they're, they're all family-owned. There's no CVS, there's no Rite Aid, yeah. there's no Walgreens in Sicily. And what happens is a family 
will purchase one. The going rate could be from 300,000 euro up to a million euro, depending on how busy it is. That's, mm -hmm. I, I did some research on that. And when they buy it, typically it stays in the family in terms of the father is a, 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 you know, has gone to a pharmacy school and one of the kids will go to pharmacy school and it becomes generational. Which is exactly what our pharmacy like is I w here. Like it used to be in the United States when I was a kid, the corner now pharmacy. Now listen, there are those smaller pharmacies, but there are the really, really in big the, in, ones in the, center in the, of the cities. Yeah, those, right. are, those are, you know, those are mega, uh, mega pharmacies. But those are some things uh, to keep in mind about the pharmacy. And, and, you know, you'll be surprised walking into a pharmacy because they offer more than just medicines and vitamins and so forth they have great comfortable shoes believe it or not i get a couple of my shoes from their dr Schultz. very comfortable they do have makeup and the staff is very helpful so let's not well, to well, mention vitamins they have good I pharmaceutical vitamins. grade vitamins i too. said vitamins yeah. and All by right. the way if there's something that they don't have for example curcumin i like to take curcumin which is like turmeric uh you can order it yep you can order it. Alfred needed uh, a cane or something, and, and they have a, they have a catalog, and you can order things. So yep. let's move on from pharmacy. Right, here's another topic: post office. Post awful. Uh, well, you need patience. No, awful. <laughs> you Don't need patience use it if you possibly can. If you possibly use can. mailboxes, etc. For Which federal, they don't ex have. <laughs> you, they, there's a million of them. Okay, the post office is like the abyss. You wait forever. They give you a number like you're going to the market to get well, your cold be, meats. That's hours. You wait hours. That's and then more you, hours. They, and they have two guys there. And they have a cigar out of their mouth like this. And they can give two craps about you. They're awful. Period. I've been to a million of them. So the but that's my view. the point is, the point is, try if you can alleviate going to the post office. Now, we've had some people send us things and mail us uh, stuff and uh, going to the post office, yeah, like Alfred said, you take a number. It's because they use the, the post office for other things besides... Post bank. Post, oh, yeah. It's a, also a bank, so people go there for that. Also, uh, some other uh, le or official business, they have to get done there. So the post office is not just a place for mailing. So... Bring patience if you're going to go to the post office. That's you know, for sure. And things are not in English, right? So right. You, so you have, so when I first went, I remember going, oh, I wanted to buy stamps. And I was like, well, which line? One, one of them said bank, postal bank, so I knew it wasn't that. So there were three other lines, and I had no idea. So I just took a number for each one, and finally I figured it out. Not but, only that, E, but if you yeah. get a parking ticket, say a meter ticket, uh, you have to go there if you want to pay your ticket, all right? Because yep. they give you a discount if you pay within eight days or some baloney like that. That's number one. In her case, for her annual health, health insurance, I gotta get it. She has to get a stamp, so she, there's a line there for that. So I go to the post office every single year in January, stand in line to pay the post office, and then they give me an official paper saying that I paid it, and then I go to the health department. And that, that's when they actually give me a card. It's a very difficult, time-taking, patient-needing process and that I have to do every year. And you wait in line. That's <laughs> all I want to say. Give the whole day. Say, shit, i got to go to the post office. And guess what? That's what's going to happen. The, the only by. good thing that I like about the Italian system, postal what? system, is you can open up a bank account there. I wish the United States would do that. Post Give those guys in the United States so you don't have to pay $4.50 for a stamp. All right? I mean, they could be doing more in the, in the United States for that. At least these people over here seem to be paying a good chunk of their way. I'm not sure about that, but that's what the All story right, so is. Okay, move on. The, okay, let's move on to telephone. Telephone, so important. So let me tell you what we do. Uh, we both have our American numbers, and we have an American phone, and we have an Italian phone, which we use, obviously, here. Now, the Italian phone is very useful because I also have my WhatsApp, and I can use my American number on my Italian phone as a WhatsApp. Now, I use it also as an Italian phone. Obviously, I use it for Internet and so forth. And getting a phone here... 
with an Italian number is a good idea if you're thinking of moving here uh, and living for an extended time, but you don't need it because now if you have your, you know, if you have internet anywhere, you can use your messenger to communicate, right? What's Facebook app? messenger, yeah. your WhatsApp, but the caveat is you have to be near internet. Well, here's what I know, okay, uh, for 22, 24 years now, 25 years, I have Telecom Italia as my uh, provider for my uh, house internet. Now we have fiber, it took about four years to get the fiber, we have the fiber, it's terrific, it's fast, chop, chop. Uh, I used to have throwaway phones, S's first phone was a throwaway <laughs> like phone. Like a flip one. It was like she was a terrorist or something, right? <laughs> you go over there, you pay 25 euro, and then, and then finally she graduated. After you had the SIM card put uh, in, that was such a pain I, in the butt. We pay per month for the Italian phones from Telecom Italia. There's also Wind and there's Trey IT, there's some big companies. 34 euro a month for calls, unlimited calling within Italy, for unlimited text messaging. So, I mean, it's bargain city, 35 bucks, 36 bucks a month. You know how much my American phone is? It's over $100 a it's month. It's ridiculous. AT&T, and, and I never used a damn thing because I'm here. All I'm right. paying 1200 a year in the States. I pay 35 times 12, like 400 a year here. The, the phones here are good, too. You can get the phones on a package deal. Very if good. you go to a place like Telecom Italia... They'll say, okay, you could have this phone, we'll just put 20 bucks on for two years. Or you can go like we do. We go to, what's the name of that place? Uni, Uni Euro. I just so bought a, Lots of great electronics Yeah, there as well. everything. I just bought a new, a new uh, Samsung Galaxy A55 5 for $400. Oh, happy day. Come on, try to buy a phone for 400 bucks even at Walmart, and you're going to get some foreign name. This is a good company. Everything. So, the phones here are far more advanced. Okay? And by the way, wait, television. Let me huh? tell you. Let me talk quick about TV. Well, wait a sec. I wouldn't say they're far more advanced, Al. They have I the do. same. They have the same line of products that we have in the United States, except they have some additional European products. So, it's not in like... In the United States, you not, have... You anyway, AT and T, no, excuse me, and Comcast, I'm and then you have a bunch of smaller no, regional I'm, ones that feed off those. E. This no, is I'm talking about the phone, like the Samsung, Apple. Right, so they have those, those the same phones, but right, they're cheaper. Let's here. move on. Now, obviously, we're just scratching the surface of the fundamentals here in moving or living or visiting Sicily. We have many more videos on the topic. I think a great one for you uh, to watch is one that we did recently having to do with some of the things uh, moving here. But for sure, we will have many more videos just like this because there's a lot of questions that came in. We appreciate those questions, and we want to make sure that we answer them. You know what you could do for us to help us along, honestly? Why don't you become a member of our community? Uh, there's a button over there. What does it say? Join? Join. Join. It's $1.99 a month. It's just a way to help us. It's like a cup of coffee. So basically, you're buying us Less. a cup of coffee once a month, and in exchange, we're giving you all this information and entertainment. Thanks to Esther's hard work, <laughs> comma, going around doing videos. You know, it takes her about 15 minutes, 15 hours. 15 minutes. 15, not 15, it takes me 15 minutes. 15 hours for her to edit a 20 minute video. And she depends, does it all by herself. Depends how much, depends yeah, on how lot, much. A lot, because she's Madam Perfectionist over here and things gotta be perfect. So at some point in time, you know, buy your head, say thanks, Eve, for helping us. And that's what she does. And thanks to your knowledge as an attorney, you give great information. So that's. Well, here's that. the thing I feed off your questions. So these we things do. that we, we definitely do. These things that we focus on today were based on questions that you emailed us or put up on the on the so comments. So keep them coming. So All right. If you have more, let them come. Don't don't. We'll we'll get out. We'll like we're gonna do this format maybe once a month. For sure. I think it's a good thing, and that's what I wanted to say today. Thanks for watching. See you on another video. If you've enjoyed this, I'm sure you'll enjoy this video right here that I'll put up. Grazie e ci vediamo alla prossima. Ciao. Sabene diga.